Hey guys, so today I wanted to make kind of a different video. Uh, I wanted to make a video showing you guys what a U.S. World War I soldier would have worn, would have used uh, during their service in the Great War. Um, I've got several things here on the table, pretty good examples of the different things that I wanted to cover with you. Um, it's not complete. I'm still working on gathering some other items that are needed, but I've got a lot of really cool stuff here. I hope you like this video. It's going to be very informative, I believe. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bring you in. All right. So here it is. As you see, uh, I've got a table full of stuff here. And uh, I'll kind of pan the table first before I really get started here. But I um, appreciate you guys watching. Please hit that like uh, button. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, you know, and share this video. Uh, I appreciate all the support and everything. And so again, this is World War I U.S. soldier, what they would have worn, used, and different things. Um, it is still a work in progress. Honestly, as you see, there are no uh, boots or shoes uh, uh, on the table. I don't have any World War II examples of that still looking. Um, these are just items that I picked up over the years at estate sales, um, flea markets, antique stores, military shows, gun shows, um, people in you know, Facebook, different things. Um, but again, I, you know, I'd like to do uh, an impression video as well. Maybe in the near future, I'd like to again get the footwear and maybe anything else that's missing. But or maybe I could just go ahead and do an impression soon, and y'all just don't look at my feet. But anyways, um, go ahead and get started here. Um, I'll actually start with the helmet here. It's on a foam mannequin head. This is a World War One U.S. Uh, helmet. It's a model 1917. And um, it's actually, you see, there's a gas mask underneath it on the face of this foam mannequin head. And uh, it does actually have uh, the filter here for the gas mask. Um, I actually got this helmet with the gas mask from the uh, great nephew of the soldier who served in World War I. So I got this directly from the family, which is pretty cool, along with a couple other items. But uh, this is basically like the standard you know, helmet and mask that would have been used and worn by a, a soldier during World War I. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I actually have a gas mask bag right here that did not come with it. I picked this up at an antique store. It's actually named to a Sergeant J.O. Bruce, I believe, Company C. So this right here is actually a U.S. gas mask bag that would have had that gas mask in it. Uh, most of the time, it would have been worn around the neck and the chest area of the U.S. soldier. So it's pretty cool. I do have a bag there. Um, right here, I've got um, a 19, uh, 1918 haversack, you know, or basically, you know, the pack they would have worn. It is dated March of 1918. Um, it does have the meat tin in here. It Overall, it's mostly complete, I believe. Uh, any of you World War I collectors, y'all correct me if I'm wrong on anything or if I'm missing anything. But um, I actually picked this up at a military show recently, uh, or maybe a year or two ago. And uh, what's cool is it's actually got information here. Lieutenant L.E. Bronder, or, or Browder, B-R-O-W-D-E-R, I guess. Company D, 336th U.S. Uh, it's hard to say, A-E-F. Uh, so that's pretty cool there. I need to research the guy. And actually, this portion of the, the field pack is actually dated 1917. So part of it's 1917, part of it's 1918. Uh, but it's pretty cool, and again, it's mostly complete. But um, again, hopefully I can do an impression, you know, in the near future and show you guys what it would look like to be worn. Uh, moving on here, I've got this uh, set up here. Now what I can say about this, this is actually a 1942 pistol belt, so this is not World War I. But I do have a World War One example. But uh, I wanted to keep this with these World War One items because this is exactly how I got it. Uh, so I wanted to keep it together. But this is a 1918. This is um, a 1911 magazine pouch, World War One. Um, and then I got a World War One canteen with cup, and it's actually a World War One cover as well. So this is what um, you know they would have worn around their waist, except for it would have been uh, you know something more like this right here. Now, this is a cartridge belt for the M, um, night, you know, the 1903 or even the uh, 19, um, M1917 rifle. Um, again, I'm still trying to get some pieces, but this is made uh, by the Russell Company. And somewhere on here, it's dated 1918. I forgot where it was, but this is a cartridge belt, World War I, which is very nice, very cool. Um, 
And you know, with the 1911 pouch, you got to have a 1911. So this is my Springfield 1911. Uh, it's all original, World War I. It's been in several videos of mine before. Um, the serial number dates this to 1914. This is a pretty rare pistol. Uh, Springfield made less than 26,000 during World War I. So this pistol here is one of less than 26,000 that were made in World War I. A lot of Colts were made in World War I. And then in World War II, a lot of Springfields were made. But again, this is a World War I era. It's got the original grips. Nothing's ever been replaced on it. This is a very nice uh, handgun. It's uh, it's definitely uh, valuable. I guess it's my save queen. But again, that's your standard, I guess, 1911. Um, and with the 1911, you would have had to have a holster. This is actually a World War I U.S. 1911 holster. You see it's got the U.S. on there. And on the reverse side, it's dated 1918, if you can see that right there. Um, I don't have this on like a, you know, a belt or the gun in it because it's in such rough condition. It's falling apart, basically. I don't want to risk it going, uh, going bad or, you know, or worse than it already is. But uh, one day I'll get a nice, uh, nicer 1911 uh, World War I um, holster. Original, of course, because I don't do reproduction stuff. But hopefully uh, before long, that would be awesome. Um, this right here is just your World War One victory medal. Uh, this is what it would look like. You know, it's pretty, pretty standard. You know, these are fairly common. It's got France on there. Um, then just information, you know, about the Great War on the back. So this would have been, you know, awarded after World War One to World War One uh, veterans. Right here, this has been a, an item that's I got back in December. State sale. It's been in probably two, three videos already. Um, now this. Uh, this is a, a World War I trench knife. It's dated 1918. If you haven't seen any other video, this is an original. Uh, I've wanted one of these about 15 years, and uh, they're highly faked, but this is definitely original. I got it for $250 at an estate sale. I got there almost three hours early, waited in the dark, cold, sitting in my truck, but I got it. Hopefully one day I'll have an original scabbard for it, but again, uh, a lot of the guys... Um, Really, after World War I, would have used these um, because contracts were canceled because World War I uh, ended. And so these right here weren't really in much use during World War I, even though they're dated 1918. Uh, but these did see quite a bit of use in World War II. And I got this at the estate sale of a World War II veteran who used it, so that's pretty cool. It's always cool to get stuff from a family. Um, right up here, I've got some... Um, leather um leg guards or shin guards these are world war one era um they're overall in pretty good condition for being leather um that's the one and then here's the other one here i got these at an uh, um i believe it was an estate sale uh maybe a couple years or so ago so that would protect their shins and everything uh, now right here is actually uh i might pronounce this wrong it's either pooties or putties p-u-t-t-e-e-s putties or putties these would have been leg wraps uh, you'll see these in a lot of books or even impression videos or other YouTube videos, World War II, uh, World War One movies and such. This is your leg wraps. These are original as well. Um, moving on, um, I've got this rifle here. This is an M1917. Uh, is made by Eddie Stone. There were three companies that made the M1917 rifle. There was Eddie Stone, Winchester, and Remington. And uh, like I said, this one is an Eddie Stone. And uh, it's, you know, it dates to 1918. Uh, the barrel dates to 1918 as well. Uh, .30-06. Um, this is actually the rifle that Sergeant York used when he did what he did to be awarded uh, the Medal of Honor, you know, capturing the Germans, and he killed several. And all he did was using this rifle here. It was not a Springfield 03. Uh, honestly, guys, the Springfield 03 is a rifle that uh, I've been wanting to fill a hole in my collection with for years. Um, I do have an 03A3, I believe, or 03A4, I believe, but I don't have a World War I Springfield 03, but hopefully one day I will. You guys know I like deals. Um, I'm, I wouldn't just spend tons of money. I'm just not that kind of collector. You know, I'm very patient and just wait for something, I guess, more reasonably priced uh, to fall in my lap or me be in the right place, right time. But this is a great rifle, a lot of fun to shoot. Very cool. Uh, this has been in some videos in the past as well. Um, it would have had a bayonet also, and this is the bayonet that it would have uh, would have had. Um, bear with me just a second, and I'll show you. This bayonet dates to 
I'm sorry about the the uh, the blur there. There you go. It dates to 1917 to be the 10th month, which is October 1917, and it was made by Remington. And like I said, Remington is one of the three companies that made the rifle as well. Remington, Eddystone, and Winchester. Now this bayonet would, even though it's a Remington, it would fit on the Eddystone rifle. You know, these bayonets would fit on, you know, different manufacturers of the M1917 rifle. Um, this is overall a really nice bayonet. It does have some pitting. Unfortunately, the scabbard, uh, it's been in like a fire or something. I'm trying to get it to to focus. You see, it's, it's, it's definitely been burnt on the end. Um, I'm trying for you guys, but it's not cooperating. But anyways, um, hopefully I can find a better example, at least of the scabbard. Um, I actually have one other bayonet in my collection that's, you know, the same style and everything. But uh, it's just a bayonet by itself, no scabbard. But hopefully I can get a better example. But um, that pretty much shows you everything on the majority of the table here that, uh, again, a World War I U.S. soldier would have used. Um, right over here, I actually have a, a wool tunic. Um, and it's actually... Uh, Company B, I guess it would be 43rd Infantry, if I'm not mistaken. It's got the U.S. collar disc as well. Private First Class. Um, there's really not anything else on it as far as patches or ribbons or awards or badges or anything. Um, it does have the trousers in here. Um, and I can tell you guys, several years ago, I actually tried this on and it fit fairly well. That was probably seven or eight years ago. Um, at that time, I didn't have as many children as I do now, so my dad bod wasn't like it is now. So I don't even know if I could fit in this anymore. But um, I'll try for you guys very soon, do an impression video if I can. If not, maybe I can give my son $10 to do it for me, because this might fit him. He's grown so much, he's about to be 15. But anyways, guys, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Y'all let me know if there's anything I missed, anything I'm not thinking of. Uh, something that maybe I need to be aware of, something else I need to buy, uh, because again, I know I don't have the, the boots or shoes or, you know, uh, the footwear, I don't have that, but just let me know if there's anything else uh, I need to complete the setup. Um, again, I do need an original scabbard for this, uh, M19 trench knife, which wasn't really used in World War One, but, uh, these are very pricey. If you guys haven't looked, I got this for 250 These are going for like seven or eight hundred dollars by themselves. And with the scabbard, you're looking at probably fourteen to sixteen on average. But but anyways, guys, y'all wish me luck. Hopefully I'll get a Springfield 03 uh in my collection one day. Uh, you know, and it's just amazing that you know a lot of us guys collect World War II, and we think a lot of that World War II stuff is 80 years old, roughly. 82, 83 years old, and so forth. But this stuff here is over a hundred years old, almost everything here on the table. Again, the pistol belt's not, uh, again, this lineman pouch, but most everything else here is over 100 years old, and it survived. And, you know, this stuff is still out there. A lot of you guys say it's hard to find, and I've said the same thing, and in a way it is, but a lot of it's in collections or just, uh, just kind of put up. But uh, hopefully a lot of this stuff starts to hit the market more often, and prices come down on everything we collect, World War I and World War II. That would be very awesome. Um, you know, I, I love making these videos. I love your guys' support. Uh, I'm trying to think of more creative videos to make for you. Again, hopefully the impression video soon. But something I can tell you, if or when I do an impression video, I will not shave my beard. I can't. Some of you guys have kind of gotten on to me in a, in, a, in a nice way about my beard in previous impression videos I've done. But if I shaved my beard, my son would look older than me. I could probably go back to middle school. I've got a baby face. Uh, I'd still be really cute and sexy even if I didn't have a beard, but I just can't shave it. So y'all forgive me if you see that or when you see that. But uh, please let me know what you think about it. Um, I'd love to see your impression videos, your World War I videos, your other videos as well. Uh, let me know when you upload videos on your channel. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think. Thank you for all the support. God bless all of you. And um, I'll be getting back to you soon. So thank you.